This is Lian So from ScienceScribe, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to write ionic formula. But before we do that, let's recap some of the skills you should be comfortable with. The first is that you should be okay with drawing atoms. So if I got you to draw the sodium and fluorine atoms, you should be comfortable with doing that. The second skill you should be okay with doing is knowing how to convert atoms into ions. So let's say if I had the sodium atom, you can see that there's just one electron on the outermost energy level. So you should be able to predict that it's going to need to lose that electron. In the case of the fluorine atom, you should be able to see straight away that it has seven out of the eight maximum electrons in the outermost energy level. So it just needs to gain one more. To form an atom, sodium's going to lose that one electron. And here's the new bit. If you've been wondering what happens to these electrons when they're lost or where these atoms gain their electrons from, this is how it works. Sodium can lose that one electron and then give it to the fluorine atom. Remember that once it loses that electron, it's called the sodium ion. Some of the ionic symbols in their formula from the first 20 elements are as shown. You'll notice that I've sorted them based on their charges and whether they're positive or negative. Positive ions are called cations, while negative ions are called anions. You'll also notice a few blank boxes. That's because these are the other ions you need to be familiar with in NCEA level 1. This layout here is called the table of ions. This is given to you in the exam. The bad news is that the names aren't, so I'm going to go ahead and give those names to you. Now don't freak out, because on the left you'll see that the cations have names that are just the same as their atoms. It's only really the anions that have slightly different names. For example, instead of calling it the fluorine ion, it's called the fluoride ion. Instead of calling it the chlorine ion, it's called the chloride ion. The other thing I want you to notice is that iron appears twice in the cations. Be careful here, you want to make sure that Fe2 plus is called iron 2 and Fe3 plus is called iron 3. I'm also going to go ahead and point one new thing out to you and that's the ammonium ion. Don't confuse this with ammonia, ammonia is something else. Let's look at a first example of writing ionic formula for silver chloride. To do this I need to find silver and chloride on my table of ions. The next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to compare their charges. You can see that silver has a plus one charge while chloride has a minus one charge. Here's a little rule for you. If you've got equal and opposite charges, you can just write the symbols together. This means I should have Ag for silver and Cl for my chloride. Therefore, silver chloride can be represented as AgCl. Before I go on, I want you to notice something. Notice that my plus and my minus, my charges, are actually gone. Let's look at another example with rule number one. Let's say we had to write the formula for barium sulfate. Just like before, we need to look for barium and sulfate in our table of ions. Just like before, we're also going to compare their charges. You can see that they have equal and opposite charges. Barium's got plus two and sulfate has a minus two. When they have equal and opposite charges, we're just going to write everything together. So barium's going to be Ba, and sulfate's actually going to be just SO4. Notice that for my final formula, I don't show the charges. I don't show a plus 2, and I don't show the minus 2 either. Rule number 2 is that we're going to use multiples to make sure that opposite charges are completely balanced. Let me show you an example. Let's say I wanted to write the ionic formula for calcium chloride. Just like before, I'm going to look in the table of ions for calcium and chloride. Again, I'm going to compare their charges, and you can see straight away that calcium's got a plus 2 charge, which is not balanced with chloride, which has a minus 1 charge. This means I'm going to need two sets of chloride so that my charges will be balanced. When I go ahead and write the formula, I'm still going to write Ca for calcium, I'm still going to write Cl for chloride, but because I need two lots of chloride, I'm going to show a little 2 in the bottom right hand corner, for my chloride. In another example of using multiples, let's say we had to write the formula for silver sulfate. We can see these on the table of ions and we're going to compare their charges again. This time silver is the one with the plus one charge and we need two sets of to balance out with the minus two charge from the sulfate. When we write the formula I'm still going to stick down Ag for silver, I'm still going to stick down SO4 for my sulfate, but because I need two sets of silver, I show that with a little 2 at the bottom right hand corner of Ag in my final formula. The final rule is that if I need multiple sets of a compound ion, then I need to use brackets. I've highlighted the compound ions for you. 
but you can see that the compound ions are just ions which have more than one different type of element. Let's look at magnesium nitrate as an example. We can compare their charges. Magnesium's got plus two when nitrate has minus one. Straight away from rule two, that tells you you need two sets of nitrates so that the charges will be balanced. Again, when we write our formula, I'm gonna stick down Mg for magnesium and NO3 for nitrate. I needed two sets of nitrates, so I show that with a little two. But since nitrate is a compound ion, I need to show that by using brackets around the entire nitrate. 